Hey guys, it's Throwback Thursday here, and man, it feels good to be back. It's been way too long since I recorded a regular video like this, so I'm here in my college dorm. I got my setup kind of going, so I can start making videos again. And what a better time to be back than Throwback Weekend. So we got lots of paint schemes to review. I went and just kind of quit did a quick Google search for most of them. Um, I know I'm missing some of them, like Jimmy Johnson's. I couldn't find a good picture. I couldn't find an acceptable picture of. Um, and yes, I'm aware some of these are going to be blurry. Um, I was just grabbing them off of like Google and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so here we go. So the first one we got is Chase Elliott's. I think this is my favorite of his throwbacks. And I actually quite liked the yellow one last year. But I think just the blue and the white clean Napa car throwing back to his dad, you know, Bill Elliott, and kind of even Napa being able to change up kind of their colors, get rid of the yellow that Napa usually brings with it, even to his patriotic scheme last year. The fact that they were able to, that they were willing to kind of give give up the uh, give it up for the throwback, I think was really cool. But then we get into our next paint scheme here, which is Kevin Harvick and uh, his Duck Hunter throwback scheme that he's going to be running this weekend. This thing looks pretty cool. I kind of like the pixelated kind of side. I played Duck Hunter a lot in the arcades as a kid. So, I mean, this one I really like as well. I mean, this is really just a solid year for throwbacks. Then we also had um, Sterling Marlins um, number double, or, or Sterling Marlins number 40, um, done by um, Landon Castle and Starcom. Um, and I love. I absolutely love it when the um, sponsors are willing to change up either their color or their um, logo to fit it. Now, of course, with this being um, Starcom itself, I can understand more why they were willing to because it was basically a, un, an unfunded, a uh, sponsorless car anyway. It's just now the company that runs the team is basically funding it. Um, and it's actually putting the logo on it. So, uh, Starcom, though, great job. Love this paint scheme. Tough might be a contender for my favorite. I'm not really sure, but then we got this Rusty Wallace paint scheme from um, Brad Kozlowski, and I love this one, too. Man, this is just a great year for throwbacks all around. Um, this one, I like it more than the, genu than the genuine draft scheme that he usually runs, mainly because it's not the same one, and it's got kind of the blue and red on the sides, which is really kind of the main difference. Um... But yeah, I love this one. Um, three car. I like that American Ethanol actually changed up their logo and whatnot because that really shows kind of the commitment by the sponsor to the throwback. Just and I will admit this is much better than their like Daytona 500 50th anniversary throwback or whatever with like the gold car. I like this one a lot better. Just think it could probably be done. Just think it could be done a little bit. I just think that it's a little plain for my personal taste, but it's definitely a solid one. Better than pr past years as well. And it's not just a throwback to a generic Dale Sr. Um, like the yellow and blue that he, that he and Newman both ran a few years back. Now, once again, Caterpillar uh, joining kind of the throwback, just kind of going, hopefully they don't get kicked off for being too demonic. Cause this is like the logo actually kind of reminds me of Slayer from Bristol last week um, when I was down there for um, and they made them take the logos off the car and put um, and they put pods on there instead. Um, but this looks very similar, like a logo, almost looks like something out of a horror movie from the hood. But yeah, love this one. Not exactly sure what it's a throwback to, but I think it just looks really cool. Then we got the Daryl Waltrip throwback that was announced at Sonoma, which was Daryl Waltrip's final race as in the bar, in the broadcasting booth. So, I lo I'm also, I'll admit it now, I am a bit of a sucker for cr the chrome numbers. I love those chrome numbers. Um, rest of the paint scheme, I mean, it's better than the Ricky Stenhouse one that no, they went with um, for the actual Sonoma race. Um... Martin Drake's Jr. doing a throwback to himself, kind of doing a throwback to the 
um, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated days back when he was run, winning a championship in the Xfinity Series, well, in the then Bush Series, now Xfinity Series. And man, this car, this one looks really nice too. Man, I might have to get all of these in diecast form. Probably not, but there are a lot I'm probably going to get. Uh, Paul Menards, I did have to stretch this one, so I apologize again for the um, lopsidedness of it. But yeah, this one though, doing a throwback to Glenn Wood back in the day, uh, the late team owner of that car. I think this looks awesome. I also really like it when they do stuff sideways down the hood. That looks really good, especially on the new Ford Mustang body. Um, also, whenever the team's willing to change up an, an iconic font like that, kind of change it back to an older font. I really like that. That's also something I like on Dale Jr.'s Xfinity car. Also, in case you guys haven't figured out yet, I'm not going to be doing any Xfinity cars um, in this wave just because it's the Xfinity series. But there are usually some pretty good throwbacks there, too. Then we've also got um, Joey Logano doing a Kevin Harvick throwback. And let me go off on a little bit of a side tangent here, but I personally... I personally have a bit of an issue with Joey Logano doing a throwback to one of his main championship contenders who is still probably going to be in the series for a good five, six years. Uh, unless his performance literally falls off a cliff. I don't see a way that uh, Kevin Harvick retires anytime soon. So, I mean, doing a Kevin Harvick throwback almost seems um, di dishonoring him as a driver because it's like, oh, yeah, meh, see ya. But, yeah, and especially since, I mean, it's not like they are teammates or anything. They're, but, yeah, and with Kevin Harvick actually being one of Joe Zagano's biggest threats for the championship outside of the Toyota, outside of the Toyota camp. But, yeah, so th that aside, though, it was a good paint scheme. And also now we got um, William Byron's. I saw this one ahead of time. Uh, when I mentioned it during my Watkins Glen Race review, um, Days of Thunder, I did not, I was still not been able to find that movie. I will watch it. That's on my bucket list of movies to watch. But then we've got, but yeah, it's, I like though it, the um, orange, like the yellow and green scheme. Almost looks like the John Deere scheme that um, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Th threw back to last year. Um, but yeah, I like this one though. Then here we go. We got um, Corey LaJoy doing a throwback to, I believe, um, is that Dale Jarrett in the Crunch Bar car? And once again, Keen Parts completely committing to the throwback by changing up the logo and actually putting it inside the white box to make it look like the Crunch Bar logo. But I also, I'm going to say this right now, kind of now that we're a little bit through the video. One thing I don't like about the throwback weekend. The sponsor that isn't paying for a car anymore, like Crunch in this case, is probably going to get more press time than the actual dry, than the actual sponsor on the car, Keen Parts. Um, I mean, Keen Parts literally isn't going to get any attention because they're going to be overshadowed by, by the car that they're throwing back to, which... I mean, I can understand, like, with Bass Pro, who who's, was on MTJ's car back then and now, that one's fine. But a lot of them, it's like, oh, yeah, you're doing a throwback to a sponsor that isn't paying you money anymore. So, just figured I'd get that out of the way, but, oh, my. This car. I love McDowell's throwback. I love the baby blue. I already told you I'm a sucker for the chrome numbers. Uh, I don't, I can't actually read what the thing says because it's a bit of a blurry image there, but this one will no doubt be being added to my diecast collection, either in 124 or 164, depending on if I can find it in 124 scale. I hope I can because this thing is awesome. I love it. And I think it'll actually look really good under the lights as well because I feel like that's when the lighter colored paint schemes like the neon yellows and whatnot and even the light blues and the white cars look best when they're under the lights. But then we got this solo cup of a car. Um, 
I love the Adam Petty throwback. Um, definitely think that um, the color choices, I mean, I was never really sure about this Adam Petty car um, when I first kind of saw it on replays and whatnot, because, of course, I wasn't around when Adam Petty was racing, but, I mean, I don't understand why people throw just these colors of cars out there on track, like, just throw colors pretty much at it, but... I love, though, the fact that they're doing a, a throwback to it, along with Victory Junction, who, which is a Richard Petty, um, which is a Richard Petty nonprofit, um, which I just love that about it. Um, and, of course, that's still being funded by Worldwide Technology. So, then we got, up next, we got probably the first throwback announced this year, which was... Um, I think at, like, June Pocono or something. But this Tim Richmond throwback, I love it. It also kind of looks like a throwback to, um, to, uh, one, to the Dale Jr., like, six, to one of Dale Jr.'s late paint schemes. Was it Dale Jr., or was that when Jeff Gordon took over the 88 for a few races at this the very similar paint scheme to this was brought in for Jeff Gordon, I guess. I think it was actually when Jeff Gordon took over the 88 for a few races. But, yeah. I really like the look of this one, though. Uh, let's see. How many more we got? Oh, yeah. You guys might notice when we were talking about it earlier, Kevin Harvick's car. Well, here's his three teammates, which... I love the idea of throwing it back to their team owner with his three championships and his three championship years. 2005, wait, was it, 2005, didn't, he had, he had to have had a championship before 2005, was it 90, was he champion of 99, wait, no, 2002, 2005, and 2011, there we go, took me a second, but yeah, um, now the one thing I want to say though is, um, initially, I, when they first announced this, I thought it was pretty cool. And then, as we kind of heard about contracts and whatnot, it almost seems more like, um, the Stuart Haas guy's kind of sucking up to the boss, um, because, um, they're doing the throwback to their boss who's going into the Hall of Fame. Um, and now, all, and, like, all three of them are on contract years, so it's like, um, almost seems like, Hey, boss, keep me around. I'm doing a throwback to you. <laughs> Which, I mean, take that how you will, but I just think it could very easily be the driver's trying to suck up to the boss, trying to get him to keep him around, but yeah. Then a few more I just kind of couldn't find really good um, cut-out pictures of. Um, was like this Ryan Blaney car. Also, I didn't really like it that much. Just I think it looks too much like it's typical like Pennzoil Menards cars. Um, and then the Mark Martin attempted throwback here. I mean, it really needs the blue to be, um, a good throwback. <laughs> of course, Oscar Mayer doesn't have the blue. So, I mean, that could be, really be a tough one. But, yeah, so I just kind of wanted to give these two kind of quick shout-outs of their own here. Um, but, yeah, I think the McDowell one's my favorite of the bunch. But there, I mean, this is just a very solid year for throwbacks. I mean, when that when that number six car is one of my two least favorite from the group, um, you're doing something right. Like I love the Starcom filter one. I think it's McDowell Starcom, and then I'm trying to think of what my third favorite would be. Ah, uh, probably. Um, yeah, I don't know, but. Uh, I think, though, th th I mean, this year's throwback schemes are awesome. So, I'm excited to see these things uh, on track. Um, oh, what's it called? On track Sunday night in the Darlington 500. Hopefully, you guys are as excited as I am. Because this is going to be a fun race to watch. Especially with the new Aero package. We don't know what it's going to do at Darlington. So, um... But, yeah, also kind of a quick note um, about the channel. Thomas Cup Series did just wrap up their season over on their channel. Uh, link for, to that will be in the description, but to their championship race. But the championship was just decided over there, and they're actually going to be bringing some of their races over to 
our channel, to my main channel, um, for the next year or so. Looking forward to it. Um, but yeah. So I figured I'd just kind of add that in there at the end as well. If you guys want to pick up a, uh, Ryan Dyer t-shirt or Thomas Cup Series playoff shirt, uh, check out the link in the description. Links are down there for all that, as well as my Patreon. So if you want to support the channel, feel free to go on down there. And yeah, thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you guys next video. Bye!